Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Out of Diagnostics. We are in northern Philadelphia, PA for the Super Saturday Conference and after the amazing training classes, we're here in the parking lot to diagnose a car. Got a couple cars lined up on the way back home. So, 2001 Hyundai Elantra only has 89,000 miles on it. It's check engine lights on. That's the only customer complaint. It runs fine. Setting a code for the upstream oxygen sensor. So let's get in it, see what code it is, look at some live data, see if we can figure this one out. Alright, so the customer said he's dealing with one trouble code. Right here, a P0133 O2 sensor circuit, slow response, bank one, sensor one. And guess what? Guess how many oxygen sensors he's tried? He said he tried this cheaper one, apparently from Japan. Then, he said the OE ones are Bosch, so he tried like two Bosch sensors. I think they... He also replaced the downstream one, but this code keeps coming back. So right in live data, we're just using OBD2 because, you know, communications on these old cars are slow and primitive. So we just want to go basic global data, read live data, and let's pull up oxygen sensors, fuel trims, only 20 data PIDs, um, coolant temp, TPS, RPM, long-term trim, short-term trim, and oxygen sensor outputs. So seven data PIDs, we can put the map in there. Let's take a look. So right now they're at the bias voltage. Both upstream and downstream sensors are at 0 0.4 volts. Okay, great. Let's start it up and see what happens. All right, here we go. So let's fire it up. So data refresh rate is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But it <laughs> updates every three seconds. Okay. Look, bank one sensor one is waking up and doing its thing. It's oscillating. We're in closed loop. I'm just gonna rev it up a little bit. Why is that staying low right now? Now it's staying high. Okay, let's go back to an idle. Seems to be working just fine. up and down, up and down. That's perfectly normal. Put in gear. We might have to take it for a test drive and see what it does during a test drive. The idle, it seems to be working just fine. This is the weirdest thing. I'm just holding the RPMs up at 2200, stuck rich. But the fuel trims, are doing something. So I think the data refresh rate here can be causing aliasing, which means if it switches you know twice every three seconds you're just getting the bottom points and you think it's a flat line or vice versa. Because at idle it looks like it's going up and down. So for, for this, because of the data refresh rate is so slow, I actually want to hook up an oscilloscope to the oxygen sensor signal and see how fast it ramps up and how fast it oscillates. So let's get out the Pico and get some actual raw data. 
All right, so we want some raw data from this upstream oxygen sensor. So the black wire on a Bosch is the signal wire, and I verified that. On this side, there's sensor ground, that's fine. Checked it with a test light off camera, and then the green one is the signal. So let's, uh, let's fire the car up, and the Pico scope, just one channel, see what it does. All right, so two channels. Um, channel one is the oxygen sensor signal. Channel two, I put on the heater control wire, just to, with an amp clamp to see if the heater is drawing, you know, a reasonable amount of current. So let's, uh, let's turn the key on. Okay, there's a 0 0.4 volt bias. Looks fine. Heater's not energized yet. I want to look at the freeze frame data for this trouble code <clears throat> to see what the parameters were when this code set. You know, did was it driving? Was it under load? When did it run this oxygen sensor test? Okay, so here's the freeze frame. 186, 1700 RPM, closed loop, 7.6 PSI. So um, we'll see what the throttle was. Trims are fine. Vehicle speed is at 45. It doesn't even give you the throttle. Or the oxygen sensor value. So this freeze frame is pretty <laughs> not very useful. Let's go back to live data and look at the data versus the raw actual voltage. All right, here we go. So live data and the scope. There's the heater control. So I'm happy with that. Looks like it's starting to come up from the bias, 0.8 to 0, 0.8 to 0. That's matching our scan data pretty well. Now let's raise the RPMs up. Look at this. There's a scope. And there's our scanner. This is why you need separate screens. See, it looks like it's saying hi. On scan data, or on the scope, it's perfect. It's oscillating. But on the scanner, it's aliasing. Hi, 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 hi. We're at point 0.8, right? We're stuck. This is crazy. This is a perfect example of slow scan data Misle being very misleading. Okay, let's just idle it. Looks perfect. Looks fine. Let's raise the RPMs up. So I don't really see anything wrong with that. You see the high, you know, the rich state lasts longer than the lean state. It's kind of like a dip down, rich, dip down, rich, dip down. Let's see if I shut it down. Turn the key back on. I don't know what these little pulses are here. You know, something's going on with the computer. A little noise. But the signal looks okay. All right, well, let's read some OEM service info on this P0133 trouble code. So, kind of a basic description. Zero is lean, one is rich. ECM judges by the electromotive force from the oxygen sensor whether the air fuel ratio is rich or lean controls injection time accordingly however if, if malfunction of the oxygen sensor causes output of normal abnormal um, electromotive force ECM is unable to perform accurate air fuel ratio control the heated oxygen sensor include a heater which heats a zirconia element the heater is controlled by the ECM 
When the intake air volume is low, temperature of the exhaust is low, current flows to the heater to heat the sensor for accurate oxygen sensor detection. Yes. So, let's read background. When the heated oxygen sensor be begins to deteriorate, the oxygen sensor signal response becomes poor. The ECM forcibly varies the air fuel mixture to make it leaner and richer and check the response speed of the heated oxygen sensor. In addition, the engine contro control module also checks for an open circuit in the heated oxygen sensor output line. Okay. Check area coolant temp normal. Signal voltage is continued to be 0.1 volts or lower for three minutes or more after the starting sequence was completed. Engine coolant temp is higher than 80. C. Engine speed is higher than 1200. Engine load is 25% or more. Input voltage supplied to the engine control module. Interface circuit is 4.5 volts or more when 5 volts is applied to the heated oxygen sensor output line via a resistor. Not exactly sure what that is. That's probably the open circuit check. And then check area coolant temp sensor normal. Engine speed 1500, 3000. Engine loads at 25 to 60%. Intake air temp is uh, above minus 10C. Under the closed loop air fuel control monitoring time, 8 seconds. So this monitor runs in 8 seconds. Judgment criteria. When the air fuel ratio is forcibly changed, lean to rich and rich to lean, heat oxygen sensor signal doesn't provide response within 1.28 seconds. 1.28 seconds. So the fuel pulse width is changed to command it rich or lean, and this oxygen sensor only has a little over a second to react, otherwise this code will set. Very interesting. So, do we trust the sensor? Even though it looks fine, maybe the computer has to mess with the fuel trim a little too much you can see it goes from 0.7 to 3%. And it's basically, it has to wait too long for the sensor to change. See, I expect to see a nice, even sine wave, but it's like stuck high, ba -boom, stuck high, da -da, stuck high. You can measure how long it is in the high range. <clears throat> See, 1.1 seconds. That's, that's not good enough. It's supposed to respond faster than that. So why would this be happening? It could potentially be due to, and I've seen this similar waveform, when it's, when the oxygen sensor isn't a nice sine wave, it's more like a dip and then stays rich, and then dip stays rich. That could be due to fuel injector flow imbalance. Okay? So, all the injector pulse width are controlled, you know, in the same way, but the computer has to overshoot the pulse width to make the sensor go rich, and then it starts taking away the pulse width, and the sensor's rich, 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 rich for too long, and eventually it dips down, and then the cycle repeats. So, I really wanted to have a good, known good Denso you know, O2 sensor in here, not an Amazon, Bosch, whatever. But the sensor seems like it's working. But to rule that out, I still need a known good Denso sensor and get the data from that. Um, then I would go after injectors. Injector balance, you know, flow rates. So this is not an easy diagnosis. Right off the bat, it's hard to make a definitive call. We can see why the criteria is you know, it's right on that threshold, the response time, but why? Just from experience, I'm, I would go towards injector flow rates and, you know, spray quality. But, 
it's not 100% definitive because we don't know if we can 100% trust this Bosch Amazon sensor. What, you know, what if just a fraction of a second it's a little slow to respond and then the computer is like, hey, we have to jack around with these fuel trims a little too much. That's right on that, right on the edge. So I think we'll leave it at that. I'll recommend a brand new oxygen sensor. You know, Denso or from Rock Auto, wherever. Um, the owner will try that out. Tells, he'll tell me if the check engine light comes back on. So I'm not going to charge him for the diagnosis yet because we don't, we don't have a guaranteed um, result. If that doesn't work, you know, should we do a fuel injector flow test right now? No, I don't want to do that. I want to do that on a cold engine. So he'd have, to, he'd have to drive the car up to my shop, which is like three hours away. So that's kind of the, that's the hard part of mobile diagnostics. You, you want to be 100%, but sometimes, and I told the owner, I need the known good part. He's like, well, you know, I already tried brand new Bosch sensors, and that's the OEM. I'm like, you know, it is what it is. So I guess we'll, we'll be back um, after... Uh, he gets a brand new Denso sensor and see if the check engine light will come back on or not. One of them going up a volt, one of them going down a volt for a total of two volts. You get that? And then if you measure the bottom right here, let's bring this down. When no one is speaking, it is absolutely zero volts. But Adam, it's got two and a half volts bias. It's got two and a half on the positive, two and a half on the negative. But what's the half minus?